There's a soul ring. Everyone having feels like quick. Ooh. They say no. Who is that? Uh, is that squirrels? Yeah, I think squirrels the only one playing blue. Today on Commander Replay, we check out this Josu Vest Lich Knight deck and find out if we can survive the onslaught from three powerful aggro decks. Next on Commander Replay. Hey guys, there's two great ways to support the channel. All links are in the description below. Welcome back everyone, playing some Josu Vest Lich Knight today, and today's deck list comes to us from Patreon supporter DJ. Uh, let's take a look at this opener. <laughs> One land dark ritual ambitions cost? Oh man, I kind of want to try that. Except, oh, we're one short still. Ah, I'm in a mulligan. I've been keeping risky hands of late, and like, sometimes it pays off. A lot of times it doesn't. This is much better. No card draw, though. Guess we could maybe find some with this thing. Keep this. So, we've actually seen this deck on the channel before. I believe it was in one of the most savage Aurelia games. And uh, it was a pretty close game. This deck ramps like crazy. So, uh, main idea with this deck is that we're trying to kick Josu Vess, which means we're trying to get the 10 mana ASAP. And uh, this deck can do that pretty quickly. It's just like chock full of ramp. So, the one thing I did note, uh, there was a surprising lack of board wipes in this deck. Uh, there was only one that I was seeing in this Toxic Deluge. I added a Damnation and Black Sun Zenith. Uh, I figured since this deck can make a lot of mana, Black Suns is cool just because it gets around indestructible. Uh, but you could easily run like Crux of Fate or something like that. Kindred Dominance. Any of those will be good. Well, that's the old turn one Jewel Lotus into Commander. Uh, Azuri Claw of Progress into play. Gross. Um, you know, we may just need to go for the throat, that thing. Hopefully, what is this thing? Whenever you cast a creature with power two or less, gain an experience? Yeah. Yeah, that thing being in play, you know, once they get a few experience counters, things just get uncontrollably large, and, uh, it's a real problem. There's a soul ring. Everyone having, feels like quick, ooh, ho, ho, ho. they say no. Who is that? Uh, is that squirrels? Yeah, I think squirrels the only one playing blue. Uh, squirrel says no on the soul ring. So, here's what's interesting about that. Uh, one, that's Mango trying to drop a soul ring, so that actually does make a lot of sense, because Mango's deck's usually pretty strong. Actually, today, in general, we're going to be playing some stronger decks, so... Uh, but Mango's deck's usually pretty strong. You don't want Mango having an early soul ring. Mango will just dominate a table with an early soul ring. So, I get that, but that is uh, now one piece of counter magic that's down for this go for the throat, so we could theoretically... Go for the throat this thing and kind of keep them off balance a little bit. Because the problem is that, like, if they just start dropping mana dorks now, like, even the mana dorks will become deadly. And it's just like, if they have anything in play at all, it will be so big that it's it's just going to kill you, basically. And that's sort of, sort of the issue with this deck. So they didn't just drop a bunch of mana dorks. Hmm. That being the case, like, if they had already got one down... Uh, I'd probably go go for the throat right here, but since they didn't, I think I'm feeling the Fell War Stone. Let's just get that happening. What's this thing do? Uh, searches your library for a card, then shuffles, puts it on top. I mean, I feel like I just want to draw some cards. Looking for a Phyrexian Arena. No arena in this deck. Uh, they have a Necropotence. Honestly, <laughs> hmm, are we going for Necro? So the pro my problem with Necro is whenever I'm playing a non-combo deck, I usually die to my own Necro which is not amazing, and give, giving me some trepidation here. I would much prefer Phyrexian Arena in this case, but I think it's early enough in the game. I think, it would, yeah, I think it makes sense to do this. So uh, we're going to choose fish, and we'll choose ourselves. We'll pay a black, and we'll get a Necropotence. Uh, but anyway, as I was starting to mention, yeah, these are going to be stronger decks today. Uh, we were trying to figure out what to play, and then I'm like, oh, I've got this Josu Vest deck from DJ, and uh, I know this one's pretty good, so... Uh, plus, I knew we had Mango and Fish in the game. They build pretty strong decks. Uh, Squirrels is a new Patreon, so I haven't seen a lot of their stuff yet. I think I've only played them one time, so... Uh, you know, we were uh, ranking our decks with Taco Bell hot sauce packets before the game, and uh, I am curious to see if Squirrels has uh, any decks at the Diablo sauce level. <laughs> Uh, ooh, Mango. <laughs> Mango got a little spike going, so. Uh, Mango drops in a Paladin class and then fires a Swords on the Azuri. So Azuri down, we didn't have to use our removal. And Mango used their removal. That makes me happy. I actually, I like how that just panned out. 
Um, there is something to say about letting someone else use their removal instead of you using yours. It doesn't always work out. There are many times where the problem just stays in play, and then you're forced to deal with it for a while. But every once in a while, not playing your removal is the right call. Anyway, let's take a read of our commander. It's Josu Vess. Four mana for a 4-5, as kicker 6, has menace, and when it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, create 8 two, two black zombie knight creature tokens with menace. Uh, really cool ability, puts a ton of bodies onto the battlefield. The fact that they have evasion with menace means that by the time that comes in, you're usually able to one-shot a player. If you have any sort of anthem effect at all, they get even more deadly. I don't know if they have any anthems in this deck. Uh, not seeing any at a quick glance... Uh, there's that one enchantment for zombies at five mana. That's not an awful idea. You can also just run a bla uh, you can also just run a bad moon because when you're talking about like kicking this thing, that is a significant amount of damage to add. So that's something that I might think about. But again, you know, it sort of depends on how they have this deck tuned. Uh, there is a torment and an exsanguinate at the top of this deck. So if it's not fully going in on the combat thing, then you know you don't need Bad Moon as much. But Quirtles plays a Shardless Agent and scries into a Soul Talisman. How about that? There's that Necropotence we were talking about. Uh, let's go ahead and cast that. How many cards do we have in hand? We have four? Yeah, we'll Necro for three. Actually, I might even Necro for four, just because I really want to make sure I hit that next land. Necro for four. Pass the turn. Here come the cards at the end step. There's a land. Signet. Ooh, Vampiric Tutor. Ah, uh, crap. Oh, we could have cast the Vampiric Tutor. Eee. Eee. That sucks. Another Tutor. All the Tutors. Um, we getting rid of this thing? Yeah, we have two Tutors in hand now. Get rid of this thing. It'll exile. I, uh, I autoed all the triggers and then f 6 or whatever, so. We could have cast the Vampiric Tutor to not have to discard and put something else on top, and that would have been cool. Toma Legends. Uh, DJ did say that this was based off of the Josu Vess Pain and Suffering deck that I played, oh god, probably about four years ago. When did Dominaria come out? Five years ago now? Something like that? It was a while ago. I talk about it from time to time, but uh, I cannot overstate the amount of hype that surrounded Dominaria when that came out, like... The, and not just the hype, but, like, the hunger for content, because back then, this channel was doing really well, like... You know, the past couple years, views have been kind of tailing off and, uh, you know, definitely not growing, usually just kind of slowly declining. During original Dominaria, it felt like this channel was going to the moon. Coming back down to Earth kind of sucks, but yeah, but, you know, I, I, I can't overstate, like, the hunger that there was for Commander content at that point in time. And it was really cool. It was really cool to be a part of that. Uh, I really wish we would get back to that place because, you know... It's fun when people are that excited to look at and consume content and be a part of the game and do all the stuff. Uh, oh, this is definitely going to kill that Necro. In addition to, it is really helpful when there's like lots of views and subscribers and stuff coming in. It helps, it helps keep channels going, right? It does take a lot of time and effort to build and maintain a channel. So when you know you're on the upswing and like things are going well, it makes it a lot easier to do that. It takes a certain kind of persistence to be working at a channel that, like, isn't doing all that well. Because, like, at some point, you just have to like what you do. And generally, I like what I do. I wish it didn't take so many hours in the day. But I do like the storytelling aspect of uh, playing Commander games. Anyway, that's enough of that. We got some stuff going on in the battlefield. So, Fish plays Skrelov's Hive. I haven't really... Oh, that's the uh, Bitter Blossom one. And they play this uh, Canker Bloom, which sacrifices itself to destroy an artifact, enchantment, or proliferate. Yeah, it means you, like, gotta shoot the Necro, right? Like, this card's insane. There's a 2-2 coming our way. Yeah, and that's like, you know, even that little damage is relevant when you have a Necropotence in play. They're probably gonna wait till after our draw step before they do anything with it. Uh, the question I have is, do we Vampiric Tutor? I think I'm going to. Try to get a Mana Doubler of some kind. Um, what are we thinking? Like, is there, like, a Cage Sun or something? Gauntlet of Power. Yeah, there's a Cage Sun. Uh, there is a little black at the table with fish... How many swamps does fish have? No swamps. Uh, we can go Gauntlet of Power then. Oh, I guess I guess that's where you get the Anthem with this deck. That makes sense. I'd probably still run Bad Moon just because you don't get to run Bad Moon a lot of places. Uh, we do not draw because Necropotence. Play a swamp. Play the Signet, I guess. Start Necroing. <laughs> uh, we're at four. One, two, three. Uh, I guess we'll do four more. And I think that's good. Yeah, Fish is going to shoot the Necro. Uh, do we want more? I think we'll be okay. We have Tutors, so we can draw. 
more card draw if we need it. Oh, you want what I should do? I should turn off auto yield so that way in case we draw more instants and crap, I did it again. Um, hmm, what are we getting rid of? Uh, I guess sign and blood. It's okay. Actually, eh, maybe we could have got rid of go for the throat just because. I mean, in a, in a second here, we're probably going to have to, like, wipe the board, but... Well, I guess no one's really... There isn't that much in play. This can get out of hand quickly, though. Mango, kind of stuck over there, was really hinging on that soul ring. Slow start. Uh, they missed the land drop, even. They can at least get their commander in, then they'll be able to continuously activate the Toma Legends. Which will be nice. Uh, fish makes a creature with Toxic. Can't block. But, yeah, those will add up. Those will add up. I'm going to send one over to Mango. Okay, so one thing I'm noting... Oh, there's a Reliquary Tower in the deck. Uh, because you're running Necropotence, I would also add a Thought Vessel. Uh, I would definitely add it over this uh, Wayfarer's Bauble. I don't think Wayfarer's Bauble is really that great of a card. I get why you run it, because you want Land Ramp, and that's not the easiest thing to come by in black. But I would definitely go Thought Vessel over it, because that Nomax hand size is really crazy when you have a Necropotence, because you can just Necro for like 15. And, you know, pray no one shoots the Thought Vessel, but... Uh, you know, if you have at least a turn to, like, cough a bunch of cards out of your hand, things are going to go well. Norn's Decree. Whenever one or more creatures an opponent controls deals combat damage to you, that player gets a poison counter. Oh, God. Whenever a player attacks, if one or more players being attacked are poison, the attacking player draws a card. Interesting. Enchantments, not the easiest thing for us to kill. I think we can get Josu Vest kicked this turn. Uh, I have to remember to, like, click Kicker. There's this whole muscle memory thing of, like, I'm used to just right-click cast Commander, and you need to right-click cast with Kicker to not mess it up. I've definitely messed it up a lot of times with Kicker Commanders. I think mostly Josu Vess, since I haven't played a ton of other Kicker Commanders, but... Uh, Deep Forest Hermit. They get more experience counters. Tell me it's an ETB and not a cast. Wow, it's an ETB. God. So they're going to get a million counters. Uh, I should probably shoot. Ooh, should probably shoot the thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, we should have just shot the thing. There's four experience counters. God, that's so easy. It is just... It is baffling how bad Kalemni is compared to the rest of this cycle. Uh, maybe he puts us on the Deluge this turn. Yep, something's gonna get giant now. Yeah, it's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Crap. Yeah, I definitely should have shot it in response to the trigger. Whoops. Uh, they draw a card, I think, because one of us is poisoned. Uh, seven's coming our way. Yeah, that's good. I mean, do we need that set? Mm, would I burn two cards for that? Nah, I think we just deluge on our turn. That'll be another 7, though. It's going to put us at, like, what, 14? Ew. It's pretty low. It's pretty low. Like I said, <laughs> Necro usually gets me killed, although we did just make a fairly sizable punt right there. Uh, this is Swamp. Swamps are good. Play a Swamp. Play... Is that a curiosity? Uh, we'd have exactly enough to... Yeah, we don't have to burn the Dark Ritual if we do this. Okay. Cast a Gauntlet of Power. Choosing Black. Deluge for 7. Down to 13. Woof. Pass like that. Oh, they got this thing in play. Oh, no. Oh, it's a Lauren that's going to shoot our mana doubler. Crap. Unless it's going to shoot one of Fish's things. I doubt it, though. Yeah, they go for the doubler. Uh, we might be close with the Dark Ritual still. Probably a good thing we saved it. Yeah, I think we'll have either exactly enough or one extra. Fish makes a toxic thingy. Uh, the problem is everyone's life is still really high, so, like, if we have to kill Fish, then... We have to worry about this thing, and, uh, like, we kind of need a one-shot fish to do that, and... At 36, we do not have 36. <laughs> fish Graz, coming into play, yep. It's 6-6. Six, six. Uh, they have a bunch of toxic creatures running around now, that is not great for us. I guess we'll have blockers. Still, it'll eat a lot of blockers. Master Biomancer is a magic card. Haven't introduced opponents, by the way. So we have Mango piloting Mural Shield of Argive. Mango having a terrible go at it after... Getting a uh, soul ring countered, uh, and just turn six, three lands. Not where you want to be, but they have two card draw sources now. Uh, I guess they can use Lauren next turn. Then if they get a land, they can cast their commander and then turn after. But, you know, it's starting to get a little late for how strong these decks are. Um, if someone, like, wipes the board continuously, that'll, you know, change the equation a little bit. But Fish kind of has, like, an ever-growing board state over here. Uh, and probably has the strongest board state at the moment, so I don't know that they're looking to wipe the board. Uh, Ambition's Cost is a nice pickup. We're not going to go for it this turn, but uh, I do like Ambition's Cost right here. So, eight, yeah, we're going to we're gonna use the Dark Ritual finally. All right, this is the part i got to not mess up. Cast with Kicker. <laughs> Messed that up so many times. Yep, we have exactly enough for our commander. And there's the ETB. Make eight two twos with Menace. 
Good old Menache. And we'll pass like that. Uh, I'm worried about getting ganged up on here. If Fish has any sort of, like, evasion, that could be a real problem for us. Uh, the way things sit currently, we are going to need to trade tokens into blockers, like if someone wants to put pressure on us. Ideally, we'll have at least a couple left over for Raziketh next turn. God, this card's so busted. I remember one time I was playing this in my Kalia deck, and I sacrificed something at instant speed to get a protection spell so that someone didn't kill the Raziketh. It was just like, felt like the dumbest thing ever. Uh, Mango gave us the draw with Lauren because they need to draw. They finally hit their fourth land. There's their commander coming in, so finally getting some things going a little bit. But we catch a Cabal Stronghold, which is actually a huge pickup because that's going to give us excess mana, which we badly need after our mana doubler going down. Uh, we will need to remember that we cannot go for the throat during Mango's turn. It's an easy thing to forget. I'm hoping our 2-2s are good enough to keep fish away here. Uh, I would probably trade a lot of them into their commander. Grafted exoskeleton, huh? Gross. Puts it on the commander. Uh, all the little ones into Mango. Big one into Squirrels. Alright, we're safe. We're safe. I still don't know how we're getting through Fish's uh, enchantment here. We have, uh, what's that, uh, Feed the Urge, or no, what's what's the name of that card? It's that two-mana guy. Um, I do not see the thing that shoots enchantments. That is concerning. Uh, there's a Soren in the deck, which would probably solve some issues. What does this thing say? Whenever one or more creatures and opponent controls deals combat damage to you, that player gets a poison. Oh. Oh, Squirrels just got eliminated with poison. Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Mango's at four. Uh, yeah, that's Squirrels getting caught with the board wipe at a bad time, I think. Didn't really get a great chance to rebuild, and, uh, yeah. Fish just, uh, overran them. Yeah, like, I don't want to attack fish with this thing out there. Like, we, we have to kill fish when that happens. Uh, that's a Varagoth. That is a solid card. Play the Cabal Stronghold. Let's activate Cabal Stronghold. That's six mana, so we can get Razaketh in pretty easily. I don't think there's a single card in this deck that deals with the, the Norns thingy. Sacrifice a zombie. How do we kill this thing? I guess we just torment for a million. Yeah, there should be one card in this deck to deal with an enchantment. <laughs> uh, we'll call that a we'll call that a shortcoming. Oh, we could opposition agent. Uh, whenever an opponent is searching their library, they exile. You may play you you may play those cards as long as they remain exiled, and you may spend mana. Yeah, maybe we want an opposition agent to let's get an opposition agent. Uh, I'm gonna fish is too scary. I'm not going anywhere. Eh, maybe yeah, I'm not going anywhere. Plus we're at eleven. Uh, we draw a card. Love it. It's a Thran Dynamo. Crusader of Odric. Uh, power and toughness equal to the number of creatures you control. Yep. Solid card for this deck. Uh, Idol of Oblivion. Sends this thing over to Fish to get the tokens going. Tomo Legends will get a counter on it. Uh, the main thing is I'm hoping to get through Mango's turn without eating removal, because we can't activate any abilities or cast anything. They draw with the Idol of Oblivion. So Mango finally getting set up a little bit. It's getting late, though. Uh, if someone wiped the board, that would buy Mango, well... One-sided board wipe would be more beneficial to Mango's situation, but... I don't know, like, if Fish and I kill each other, then that could give Mango just enough time to kind of get back into it. Although, Mango's going... Ooh, Mango's going up to five poison here. And they have three blockers against Fish's little uh, army of one ones over here. <laughs> uh, target player draws three cards, loses three life, and gets three poison counters, choosing themselves. Soul Ring. Grateful Apparition. Plague Mirror. See what Fish wants to do for attacks. Uh, big one. Ooh. Yeah, that one's really big. Uh, small one's into Mango. Think we just go for the throat, the big one. Yeah, shoot the commander, get the commander out of here. That is just... We can block it and trade, like, just about everything, but I don't want to do that. Uh, I don't think this is going to kill Mango, but it's going to put him really high on poison. Uh, right now, I think we're about to see just how broken Razaketh is. This card is insane. Borderline too strong, in my opinion. Actually, I don't even know if it's borderline. Uh, sacrifice a zombie. You don't even see it that much anymore, honestly, just because it's so much mana. and You do need other things in play to actually be able to use it, but it is... Like, what we're about to do here is just unfair. Get Cabal Coffers. Play Cabal Coffers. Sacrifice another thing. We could be attacking first, but whatever. Cage Sun? Get Cage Sun. Uh, sacrifice our commander. We're actually going to want to recast our commander here. Back to the command zone. Uh, what do we need? I, uh, you know, I'll feel a lot better if we have a, uh, where's that card? What's it called? It's the three mana guy that, sudden spoiling, keeps you from dying. <laughs> I guess on the other, ooh, what I just thought about? 
Um, we could get a Sorin and then just Sorin fish to ten and attack with Razaketh. It's not an awful idea. Um, let us let's play two black into the Cabal coffers. That makes six. We'll use this to make a bunch more. Brings us up to nine. Let's get the Cage Sun on black. Choosing black. Um, got three left. Recast our commander. I think. Oh, God. Almost misclicked it. Oh, God. Almost did the thing and told us not to do. Cast with kicker. Nine. Oh, God. That's going to take most of the mana. Um, Do we recast right here? Can we just... Can we find a way to just kill fish right here? Soren would be good. Soren plus Razaketh puts fish to one. Where do we find one damage? I've got it. Okay. Sack more stuff. Oh, God. We're at three. Okay. We can't really do this that much more. Gray Merchant isn't the worst thing I've ever heard of. How much black mana do we have? Only be five. Yeah, okay. Uh, I feel I feel bad about this. I hate Soren just with a burning passion, but... What about this thing? Opponents have some creatures. Could use a little life gain. Yeah. Yeah, okay, maybe, that, maybe that's what we're doing. Let's get the Meat Hook Massacre. Let's get the Thran Dynamo. Biggest thing we need to kill looks like four. Uh, we'll leave one mana floating, I guess. Just gonna leave Razaketh back... Oh, we draw a card. Cool. There's a swamp. Yeah, pumping these up from 2-2s two to 3-3s three is a lot of damage. Mango takes a shot for 12, goes down to 20. Uh, then we Meat Hook Massacre. Uh, we'll go X5 just in case someone has a weird effect that I'm not seeing. Meat Hook Massacre minus the creatures. Bunch of triggers going on the stack. This card's kind of busted, too. I've only seen it a handful of times, but pretty good. We go back to 10. 10 is much healthier than where we were. And each opponent loses a little bit of life. Gonna close up that distance on fish a little bit. Uh, I feel good just leaving our sudden spoiling up. We'll pass like that. Brings Mango down to 16, so we can start thinking about, like, killing Mango with just the Razaketh, if necessary. Gilded Lotus. Expand the sphere. Look at the top six cards of your library. Put up to two lands from among them onto the battlefield. Uh, the rest on the bottom in a random order. If you put fewer than two lands onto the battlefield, proliferate a number of times. Equal oh, God. Uh, we're up to two poison counters. Jahira, friend of the forest. I haven't seen this one. Tokens have Adam and Oh, God. That seems insane. I'm sure there's no way to break that card. <laughs> Puts the grafted exoskeleton on it. Sure. Uh, we'll flash in the opposition agent. Uh, this is a Crypt Gas. More mana doubling is insane, is what it is. Uh, play Swamp. Uh, cast our commander with Kicker. Actually, should probably get the Crypt Gas first, huh? Activate the Coffers. Then activate the Stronghold. Cool, that's 14 mana. That is so much mana. Crypt Gas. Uh, cast with kicker. Oh god, we're making three per land now. That is a lot of mana. There's an extort trigger. Notably, is more life gain. Pay the extort. Make a bunch of dudes. Sacrifice a zombie. God, we can even just drain opponents with that. Yeah, so that's what I'm planning. My plan here is to get, uh, what's his name? Soren, and bring fish to ten. Hit fish with this thing, bring fish down to nine, and then just sack a creature to drain the rest. Uh, get Soren. Cast Soren. We can extort. I guess we could also extort for the win with a spell. Uh, make Fish's life total 10. Oh, God, I hate doing that. Feels so bad. Feels so, so bad. Send this thing into Mango, this thing into Fish. We draw a card. Mango goes to 9. Fish goes to 1. We get a poison counter. Up to 3. Uh, then we sacrifice a creature. Fish goes down. We get to search for a card. And we could probably just get Exsanguinate here. Where is it? Exsanguinate for however much we can exsanguinate for. Ten. Extort. Oh, does Mango have a, uh... No, they're just gonna draw a card with Tomo Legends. We'll say, they have the, do they have it to Fairy's Protection? As good as all the white, like, fog and protection effects are, it's still really hard to get around Exsanguinate and Torment. Uh, to Fairy's is really the only one I'm aware of that does it. But anyway, we ended up taking down the table. Uh, yeah, this deck is strong. In particular... Razaketh, like, this deck is strong. Razaketh is even stronger than the rest of this deck. Razaketh is just a stupid magic card. We just tutored for all the things we wanted to all game, and uh, no one had the removal to shoot Razaketh, and that is a problem. That will get you killed nine times out of ten. It is just an insane magic card. I remember having a discussion a while with someone back about their spider tribal deck and they were running Razaketh in it, and they're like, how do you evaluate the power level of that deck? And it's like, okay... Games with Razaketh are going to be insane. Games without Razaketh will be, you know, probably kind of underpowered because it's Spider Tribal. But it puts a big spike in your power level if you find it during that game. Like, it really kind of changes the way 
your deck is going to play and the way it's going to look. So just an absurd magic card. Uh, some things I've been thinking about as I've been going through this game. So uh, notably, there are a couple of multi-tapper mana producers in this deck, which means instead of something like Wayfarer's Bobble, I would actually go Voltaic Key Manifold Key. Um, I do this in my Ashling deck, and this actually works out pretty well because it gives you the ability to untap the artifact. Also means you can add like a mana vault if you want to. Uh, also works with Basalt Monolith right here, which is nice. But yeah, I've been using this trick in Ashling, and I've been really happy with the results. And it's like, you know, you're like, oh, it seems like it has to be a combo. And you're like, it finds a way to make itself useful, right? They're both one mana play, so they're not like that difficult. In the scope of like, we had a Necro that we drew for eight, right? You just drop these down early. And if you have like Necro or something, right, just refill it and no big deal. So I would do that. I would also probably add a Thought Vessel like we talked about because of the Necro. Uh, the other thing, too, what's the name of that card? God, I can't think of the name of it. Feed the Swarm. That's the one we want. Uh, yeah, you're definitely going to want to feed the Swarm in here because enchantments show up. <laughs> they are a problem. Um, I would probably go for that. What is Feed the Swarm? Is it a sorcery? It's a sorcery. These are instants, which are nice. You know, I actually wonder about Opposition Agent. Uh, it's a tricky card. Like, by the time we got it, no one was searching their library. And not to say that's going to happen every time, but um, it is a weird card. Uh, I also did note that the number of board wipes was actually very low. Uh, there was only one that I saw. If you're playing this in a combo meta, that's fine. I mean, yeah, even still, I'd probably run at least two, right? I would have two in the main deck just to... Uh, what's this Vito? Oh, Creatures Gain Lifelink. That's why that's in there. Okay. A lot of tutors in this deck, though, so that is something. But yeah, I'd probably have at least a second board wipe. Um, I don't know what else I'd cut. We'll just cut a land for now, because there were initially 39 lands in the deck, and I get why with this deck, but uh, just for the sake of... Well, we're still one card over, aren't we? Uh, Skyclave Relic is fine. If we're doing this Voltaic Key, Manifold Key, I'd probably add a Nyx Lotus in that spot as another multi-tapper. Nyx Lotus, it's sort of on par with Gilded Lotus. It can be a little awkward early because you need the Devotion, but late in the game, if you're making 7-8 extra mana a turn, uh, that can really propel you ahead, so that one's cool. Honestly, with all the tutors in this deck, you have a Whip of Erebos. Uh, I don't know that I would also run Veto, uh, so I might cut the Veto and just go on the, like, Whip of Erebos is good enough also... Uh, Exsanguinate can gain you a lot of life and Grey Merchant's in here as well, so um, Vito might be one worth cutting, although uh, let's see, you gain the life, oh, that does kind of double up the damage, maybe not maybe not, anyway, that's a look at the deck uh, there are some other things you can do with this deck too, uh, what's that card? Hypnotic something? No spec Sadistic Hypnotist that's the card, this thing is nasty uh, so, sacrifice a creature, target player discards two cards, activate as a sorcery uh, basically you can just empty your opponent's hands and, you know, they won't be able to do all that much afterwards. So, uh, that is a nasty thing that you can run in this deck. And there's, I'm sure, the other thing too, there's not a lot of sack outlets. You could have some more sack outlets in this deck. It's not necessary. There is uh, an attrition right here, which is nice. Um, Mind Slash is another one that you can run. You don't need to, but they are powerful cards, and for certain settings, they make sense. But uh, overall, yeah, the deck is in very good shape. Just a couple of minor tweaks that I would make uh, I, that I personally like. Like I said, I've been really hot on this Manifold Key, Voltaic Key with Thran Dynamo and Friends type of plan, so uh, I might check that out. But other than that, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, feel free to comment, like, or subscribe. Thank you for watching. I want to thank my awesome Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. If you want to help support the channel, vote on which decks I play next, or if you want to get some good games of Spelltable, be sure to check out my Patreon at the link below.